Welcome to my lecture online. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. It's related to triple integrals as we saw before. We're going to deal with spherical shapes, cones within those spherical shapes, and then the concept of a solid angle, and then later on we'll explain what a steradian is. But what do we mean by a solid angle? Well, the definition could be expressed as follows. It is a two-dimensional angle in three-dimensional space. Now, a two-dimensional angle is not something we normally deal with. We usually deal with a single-dimensional angle. So we'll ask about the size, the angular size of an angle on a triangle, for example. But what do we mean by a two-dimensional angle? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. We can also express it as, it is a measure of how big something appears from a particular vantage point. For example, when we're observing the moon, we can say the moon is a specific size in the sky. If the distance to the moon is radius r, then the angular size in square degrees would be the measure of how big the moon appears to us. So think of a full sphere right here, and we have a cone-shaped object. And let's say that the distance r is a distance to the edge of that sphere, and so we want a region there. This could be, for example, the moon. That could be the moon right there. And we can say, well, how big does that appear? Well, if we take the entire sky, all the way around in all directions, the total angular size of the sky is 41,253 square degrees. And we'll show you later how that's calculated in a different video. Now, when we look at the moon, we realize that the diameter of the moon spans an angle of a half a degree which means that half the diameter of the moon is equal to a quarter degree. We could then say that the solid angle of the moon can be expressed as pi times one quarter degree squared. And if we calculate that, that is almost 0.2 squared degrees. So if we divide that 0.2 squared degrees of the moon, divided by the total size of the sky in square degrees, we can then see that the moon spans a fraction of 4.76 times 10 to the minus 6 of the entire sky. Well, 10 to the minus 6 is 1 million, so that means that the moon is about 5 million the size of the entire sky, if you want to look at that. Now, if we go back over here, notice that we have that the total surface area of a sphere is equal to 2 pi r squared times the negative cosine of phi, and if you remember going back a few videos, that we're able to get the volume of the total sphere in the very same way, except here we had 2 thirds pi r, pi r cubed times this quantity for the total volume. Notice that the ratio of the volume to the ratio of the area is really a one-to-one. -one. If you double the area on the surface of a sphere, you double the volume of the cone. So the volume of the cone relative to the area at the top of the cone, that relationship holds true, and we'll show you how to do that later. So when we evaluate this minus cosine from zero to one quarter of a degree, which is half that angle that spans the total distance there, we get minus 0.9999048 plus 1. And if we do that, notice we get that very same number, 4.76 times 10 to the minus 6, 4 pi r squared. So 4 pi r squared is the size, the surface area of an entire sphere, and this fraction of it, that's the size of the moon relative to that, which can be found by taking the limits from 0 to 1 quarter of a degree of minus cosine of phi in the valuation of that integral, and we'll show you where that integral came from, was, and then we get the size of the moon relative to the whole sky. So that's the concept of a solid angle. In the next video, we'll see the concept of a steradian, and then we'll draw the connection between this and the triple integral over a spherical cone. And that's how it's done.